Parents, have you ever found yourself in a standoff with your toddler over something as simple as putting on their socks? One minute, they're sweet and cooperative, and the next, it's like they've turned into a tiny, determined negotiator who will not budge. Sounds familiar? You're definitely not alone. But what if I told you that this stubborn behavior isn't just random defiance? It's actually a crucial part of their development. In today's video, we're diving into why young children seem so headstrong and most importantly, how you can turn those tough moments into opportunities for growth and connection. If you're visiting for the first time, I'm Dr. Tanisha Burke, your positive parenting coach, and welcome to our channel. Before we continue, I need you to check something. Are you a subscriber? If you're not, we encourage you to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be alerted of our upcoming videos and also join our growing community of positive parenting parents from around the world. As parents, we've all been there. Your sweet toddler suddenly becomes a little force of nature. Arms crossed, firmly planted, refusing to wear the shoes they've worn every day for a week or insisting on snacks right before dinner. It's easy to label this behavior as stubborn, but let's take a step back and explore why young children often seem so headstrong, and more importantly, how we can respond in ways that promote positive development and connection. So, to get deeper into the topic, we are going to look at some of the key reasons why our children may act stubbornly. The first reason is that they're developing independence. Around the age of two, children begin to realize they are separate individuals from their parents. This newfound independence often comes with a strong desire to assert their will, test boundaries, and make decisions for themselves. What we see as stubbornness is just their natural developmental drive to express autonomy. The second reason is limited language skills. Young children may not yet have the vocabulary to fully express their thoughts, needs or frustration. Imagine how frustrating it must be to want something so badly, but not have the vocabulary to communicate it clearly. Stubborn behavior can sometimes be their way of trying to gain control when they don't feel understood. Another reason children may act stubborn is strong emotions, small bodies. Children experience intense emotion but often lack the tools to manage them. When a child is overwhelmed with frustration, disappointment or excitement, their little bodies and minds struggle to cope, which can lead to meltdowns and defiant behavior. It's not that they don't want to cooperate, it's that they don't yet know how to regulate these big feelings. Children may act stubborn to seek attention and connection. Sometimes what appears to be stubbornness is a child's way of seeking attention. Young children have a deep need for connection with their caregivers. If they feel disconnected or overlooked, they may act out to bring your focus back to them. While it can be frustrating, this behavior is their way of asking for reassurance and closeness. And the final reason why young children might act stubbornly is curiosity and experimentation. Kids are natural scientists. They learn through experimentation and observation, which includes testing boundaries. What happen if I don't eat my veggies? What will mom or dad do if I refuse to put on my shoes? It's not defiance for the sake of defiance. It's a way of figuring out how the world works and how much control they really have. Now that we have a better understanding of why young children act this way, let's explore some positive, practical parenting tools to guide you through these tough moments. Our first parenting tool is to stay calm. It's easy to get frustrated when your child is being stubborn, but staying calm is crucial. Children mirror our emotions. If you react with anger or impatience, they're likely to escalate as well. Take a deep breath, ground yourself, and respond calmly. Sometimes the best first step is to simply pause before responding, giving yourself time to collect your thoughts. 
Create a mantra like, this is a teaching moment to remind yourself that these challenges are opportunities to help your child grow emotionally. Our second parenting tool is to offer choices with limits. Parts of a child's need for autonomy can be satisfied by giving them choices which helps them feel empowered. However, too many options can be overwhelming, so offer two or three choices within limits you're comfortable with. Instead of saying, put on your shoes right now, try offering a choice. Would you like to wear your red shoes or your blue shoes today? This way, your child still gets a say, but you're guiding them toward the desired outcome. For non-negotiable situations, try phrasing it as, which of these would you like to do first? Such as putting on their coat before or after getting their shoes on. Our third parenting tool is to empathize with their feelings. When your child is upset, meet them with empathy. Often their stubbornness is fueled by a sense of not being heard or understood. Acknowledge their emotions by saying something like, I see that you're really frustrated that we have to leave the park. Validating their feelings help them feel respected and calm their emotional storms. Use phrases like, for example, I get it, you're feeling sad that we can't stay longer and we have to go home now. Maybe we can come back tomorrow. Using and instead of but we have to go home now invites more of cooperation instead of resistance. Repeat that to yourself using either and or but and you will feel the difference in your body. The fourth parenting tool is to stay consistent with boundaries. While offering choices and empathizing are important, consistency in boundaries is equally critical. Children need to feel secure in their environment and predictable boundaries help them understand what's expected of them. This does not mean being rigid, but it does mean holding firm on key rules in a calm and loving way. Frame boundaries positively. Instead of saying, no more TV, say, now it's time for dinner. We'll watch more tomorrow. Our fifth recommended parenting tool is to use positive reinforcement. Catch your child being cooperative and praise them for it. Positive reinforcement is incredibly powerful for encouraging desired behavior. Instead of waiting for the next power struggle, point out when your child is being flexible or helpful. You can say things like, thank you for putting your toys away. That was really helpful. Or, I love how you put on your shoes all by yourself. Modeling problem solving is our sixth recommended parenting tool. When a power struggle arises, instead of digging in your heels, model problem solving skills. Say something like, it looks like we're having a hard time agreeing on what to do next. Let's think of a solution together. This approach teaches them that there are ways to work through conflicts without stubbornness or yelling. Creative solutions like, Would it be fun if your teddy bear helped you to get dressed today? Or can we race to the car? Or also helpful ways to gain cooperation. Providing clear transitions is also important. Young children often struggle with transitions, whether it's leaving the playground or getting ready for bed. Providing clear and consistent warnings can make these moments easier. Try giving five minute warnings before a transition and remind them a couple of times so they can mentally prepare. It is also good to use a visual timer or countdown system. For example, in five minutes we're going to clean up, then remind them at three minute mark and again at one minute mark. Our final parenting tool to help you with handling stubborn behavior is to give them space to calm down. Sometimes, no matter how patient or understanding you are, your child's emotions will get the best of them. In these cases, it's helpful to give them a calm space to let their emotions settle. This isn't a punishment, but a safe area where they can process their feelings. Once they're calm, you can talk about what happened and how to handle it differently next time. A cool thing that you can do is to create a cozy, calm corner with pillows, 
books or the favorite stuffed animal where your child can retreat when they need a moment to themselves. Let's do a quick review of the tools that you can use when you're encountering stubbornness in your children. One, stay calm and centered. Two, offer choices within limits. Three, empathize with their feelings. Four, stay consistent with boundaries. Five, use positive reinforcement. Six, model problem solving. Seven, provide clear transitions. And eight, give them space to calm down. Stubbornness in young children is often just a natural part of their development as they explore independence, emotions, and their place in this world. As parents, our job is to guide them with patience, empathy, and consistency, teaching them how to express themselves and make decisions while respecting boundaries. It's not always easy in the moment, but by approaching these challenges with understanding and positivity, we can build stronger relationships with our children and help them grow into confident, emotionally intelligent individuals. So, next time your child digs into their heels, remember parents, you are shaping not just behavior, but a whole person learning how to navigate their world. We are now at the end of our video of understanding why children are stubborn and what we can do about it. We hope that the positive parenting tools that we provide today are helpful to you. We would love to hear from you, so please leave your comments in the comment section. Which parenting tool we suggested has been the most effective for you? Also, please share with friends and family this video who you believe may benefit from the content. Thank you so much for joining us and goodbye for now.